So the Chargers are 2-0 for the first time since 2012, but they have a tough road test against the Pittsburgh Steelers this weekend, which may or may not be even tougher if you know who doesn't start on Sunday. So let's take a look at all the latest news, including the injuries and who might or might not play, and as well as how the two teams match up against each other. Can the Chargers go 3-0 ahead of their big matchup with the Kansas City Chiefs? There is only one way to find out, and that's liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So first, let's talk about all the news surrounding this game. For example, like this huge scoop that Diana Rossini got. Apparently, the Chargers are going to run the ball a lot. Sorry, I should have said spoiler alert. Obviously, the actual biggest news around this game is whether or not Justin Herbert is going to play. I kept trying to push this game preview as late as possible to see if there's going to be any clarity in the situation, but as of recording, we still don't know for sure. But it seems like he's trending towards playing. If you had asked me a day ago, I would have probably said, no, he's not going to play, because in a way, I think it would make sense considering they do have the Chiefs coming up. And the Steelers are obviously still a conference play, so it's not exactly like a an out of conference game. So it's still important, but you know, you'd think you'd want Herbert as healthy as possible for that Chiefs game. But it seems like Herbert's going to try to tough it out because he was even talking to reporters. And also Herbert does have a history of playing through injuries and even worse ones than this one. Though the high ankle sprain this time around is on the same foot that he had his plantar fasciitis on. But still point being, he's probably going to tough it out the Harbaugh way. And in all honesty, all this is probably just a big smokescreen because Harbaugh knows a Tomlin-led team is going to be a pretty tough opponent, so he needs to get in all the gamesmanship he can. And honestly, it's pretty sus the way he's been talking about who might replace Herbert. He's making it sound like it could be Taylor Haneke, but it could also very well be Easton Stick, which sounds like an interesting strategy. It'd make them prepare for three quarterbacks. But then again, since Easton Stick is involved, it's probably more like 2.25. Can't see Mike Tomlin stressing out too much over a guy who's probably like a poor man's Doc Hodges. But still, adding in the variable of Taylor Heineke, who's now on a team with a new offense that they've not seen him play at all in, it seems pretty obvious to me that they're trying to do smoke screens. But in the event that Justin Herbert doesn't play, obviously Taylor Heineke is the better option. He's now been around the team for three weeks, and yes, that's not as good as the whatever five years that Easton Stick has been on the team but I'll take the three weeks over the five years. Heineke has proved himself as a spot starter in this league. As far as other injuries go, there isn't too much to be concerned about. Junior Colson has already been listed as out, but he wasn't playing that much. Josh Palmer, who's listed with an elbow and calf, didn't participate all week, so he's looking unlikely to play, even though he still only has a questionable tag. Obviously, it's still possible he plays, and I guess if he doesn't, they'll miss his run blocking. As far as the Steelers go, Russell Wilson's obviously not playing because he's been soft benched for Fields. And Troy Fatanu, their rookie right tackle, he's not playing because of injury. That's a pretty significant injury for the Steelers considering how much they've run the ball, but we'll get into more of that when we talk matchups, which is now. I think it's fair to say that these two teams have quite a bit in common. Both Harbaugh and Tomlin love to win ugly and are also very good at it. They believe in running the ball a lot and defense is obviously very important too. But as Diana Rossi alluded earlier, this is going to be a very run-heavy approach regardless of who's starting for the Chargers. And I assume the same is going to be the case for the Steelers. Interestingly, in terms of raw rushing totals, the Steelers are basically second last in the league. But obviously just simply looking at the amount of yards gained so far is misleading. Through two games, the Steelers have definitely focused on ball control. And seeing as they managed to squeak out wins like 13-6 against the Broncos and 18-10 against the Falcons, while also playing with the lead for most of it. They were able to drain a lot of clock without having to put the ball in harm's way. And considering the fact that Justin Fields, who is known for fumbling the ball all the time, has been able to keep the ball in his hands, that strategy has been a success so far. So I think it's safe to say that the Steelers' run attack is solid despite the numbers not being that impressive. However, their performance up to this point might not be applicable. Like I mentioned earlier, their first round pick, Troy Fontano, is out as well as their starting left guard, Isaac Samalo. Going into the year, it finally looks like the Steelers are going to have a good offensive line, but that's going to be tested because of all the injuries. Considering that, I think the Chargers will still have an advantage when it comes to the ground game. Sure, they might be limited when it comes to Herbert behind center because he won't be able to run much. With a healthy O-line, it includes Joe Alt, who's been doing quite well at right tackle. They should be able to move the ball, even on a stout Steelers defense. In terms of the team defenses, they both look pretty strong coming in. After two games, the Steelers are ranked 8th, according to DVOA, while the Chargers are ranked number one. Of course, this is an extremely small sample size, so it makes sense to unpack it to see if there's anything polluting the sample. And in both cases, I think you could argue that the teams haven't had an actual test offensively. The Steelers D, for example, has faced Bo Nix and the Broncos, which congrats for making Bo Nix look bad. 
And they also play the Falcons, who Kirk Cousins doesn't quite look like he's totally over that Achilles injury. Meanwhile, the Chargers defense so far has got to face Gardner Minshew, who's basically the new Ryan Fitzpatrick. And they also had the amazing fortune of facing Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers, effectively ending Bryce Young's career, which also congrats. But I think you could also say in the case of both teams, the defense definitely made it harder for their opponent. Like in the Broncos game, sure, they got two interceptions in the Bo Nix, not a big deal. But the thing is, they had a 13-0 lead and six of those points came in the fourth quarter on meaningless field goals. They were effectively pitching a shutout into the fourth quarter, while the Chargers allowed three points to Bryce Young and never let up. And even with the previous opponent with Minshew, he looked a lot better against the Ravens the next week than he did against the Chargers. Moreover, neither team seems to have very many injuries when it comes to the defensive side of the ball. For the Steelers, Cameron Hayward and TJ Watt appear poised to play, and Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack are set to play. So all in all, it doesn't seem like there's any real advantage, I think, when it comes to the defense. And despite the Chargers' higher ranking, I'm not ready to say that they're definitively better. However, I'm definitely impressed so far with what Jesse Minter has done. In terms of the coaching matchup, both are excellent. And also, there's a lot of similarities. They both like to say weird stuff in press conferences and get their players psyched up to play football. But the main similarity between the two is the fact that they're both really good at winning ugly games. And by that I mean they're good at staying disciplined, not asking too much from their players, and making good in-game decisions to help win football games. So that means Harbaugh, if regardless if it's Herbert or Easton Stick even, it's clear from his years and years of coaching that Harbaugh will make the kind of decisions that demonstrate an understanding of what the current team makeup is. And judging how Tomlin has been protecting Justin Fields so far this year, he does the same thing. So if it wasn't clear, what I'm trying to point out is these teams are very equally matched. But are they so equally matched that I'm not willing to make a prediction? So as far as who I think is going to win this game, I tend to prefer to look at what the smart money is saying. Early on in the week, a lot of money came in on the Chargers, while the tickets have been overall on the Steelers, meaning the public is betting the Steelers. The line had moved to one and a half on the Steelers, but now it's back up to two and a half, despite the fact that looking more and more like Herbert is trending to play. You'd think the news of Herbert even playing while injured would have kept the line that way, but instead it moved to two and a half. A good feeling says Vegas wants you to bet on the Steelers. Considering there's a lot of money going in on the Chargers, a lot of big money, I feel pretty comfortable in thinking that the Chargers could very well easily pull this out. That said, if it's Easton Stick, I'm definitely picking the Chargers to lose. But even with Taylor Heineke, I think they can pull it out. And I know the Steelers have a home field advantage here, but Herbert has generally done well going from west to east. As far as a score prediction, I'm thinking something like 12 to 10. I'm not even kidding. Cameron Dicker is going to lead the way offensively with four field goals. And this game might end in an hour and a half, which gives you more than enough time to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Thanks again for watching. Oh, and let me know in the comments, who do you think is going to win?